Um, I had an open vision. Oh, what is this? Saved her file up to 4Gs? I don't know. Um, so I think I have to hurry up. I, I think this is still recording. I hope it might be recording on two different files now. I don't know. So in this dream, um, I, I had the open vision. It was a close up of a bald eagle. The back of the bald eagle was facing me and it was perched on a branch. This, it was just sitting on a branch. It wasn't flying. It was perched. The back was towards me and it, and the head of the eagle, I'm seeing it from the back and the head of the eagle is turned to, to the, to the right. So it wasn't turned to the left. So that's all I saw. I saw a, a bald eagle perched on a branch. Um, I was looking at it from the back and its head was turned looking to the right. And so, um, I started once again, I started to tell everybody, this is the dream I had. And not that I was, you know, the Lord gave it to me to prophesy or to give anybody messages, but I thought it was just so amazing and fascinating and that I just wanted to share with people about my dream. Once again, I, I shared online. I told my son, I told everybody I could, told his dad. I said, listen, there is going to be war. I don't know if it's going to be spiritual war or an actual war. And I don't know who all is going to be involved, but I said America is going to be involved. There's going to be some type of war, either a spiritual war or an actual war, and America is going to be involved. And so that was January. And then sure enough, what happened? First in March, it was the plague that caused death and the coronavirus. And then shortly after that, the culture war in America. So that was, I believe, those um, dreams and visions, those two dreams and visions, because I, like I said, I was really feeling forgotten, um, feeling just, I didn't, I felt, even though I knew God had it at this point, I believed absolutely in the existence of God and the resurrection of Christ. And, but I was just suffering and I was, I was praying so diligently. I was praying so much. I was in, you know, I, I I prayed every chance I got. And um, so those two dreams that culminated in 2020 that actually came through, that was really what, you know, a lot of people would call a God wink. And uh, so he's letting me know, Trina, I'm in control of everything. I'm giving you this insight and I'm giving you this perspective and I'm giving you these dreams and visions to let you know to, to confirm my providence and my sovereignty and uh, my eyes are on everything. I know what's going to happen. He gave me these dreams and visions before these things happened in 2020 to, you know, let me know uh, I'm in control. I'm, I'm showing you this to let you know, uh, you know, to, to comfort me and encourage me to, he, I've got my eyes on you. I see you there. I see you there. Uh, and there's other things I'm dealing with, but I'm seeing you there and I'm letting you in have a perspective and an insight of, you know, just a couple things that I knew that were going to happen ahead of time. So I, it gave me the encouragement to continue to be helpful. And I think it was like five of those older women passed away that I have helped um, during the lockdown for one reason or another. So I was a, a really, I don't know what they would have done if I wasn't there. I don't know what they would have done. And anyway, so the last one, I hope I could get this done under 40 minutes. Let's see. So the last on um, the last stream I wanted to tell you about before I was able to when the borders were open and I was able to leave that third world country and doors were opening shortly before that, though, um, shortly before I was able to, to leave, I had um, I was between sleep and wake. It was first thing in the morning. Um, I knew I was aware that I was dreaming. Um, my eyes were closed. Uh, it wasn't really an open vision, but I wanted to share this with you real quick. Um, so I was, the, the, the scene opened up that, uh, Jesus was in front of me on a throne and I was kneeling on a lower pavement. Quite a few, oh, there's that clicking thing again, quite a few yards away from him, uh, 
I would say at least maybe five or six yards away from him. So that's how it, I'm looking at him and I'm amazed. I'm in shock of what I'm seeing. And to my left, there's a huge angel that was probably maybe two yards away from me, about two yards or so away from me on my left. And then about another five or six yards on the left hand of the angel was a very, very handsome, it has to be some type of spiritual being, very, very handsome person. Actually, I think I've seen him before in um, 1999. Uh, I, I might get to that one day for you. But I think it was the same um, spiritual being. Obviously, he's in a, in the spiritual realm. It's the spiritual being. I don't know if he was, you know, representing uh, Satan or, but he was quite a ways away from the Lord. And he was like standing back um, away from us and away from the Lord. And he was very, very handsome. And he was in a three piece suit and he had like a clipboard in his hand, uh, some type of something in his hand, like a clipboard or something. And um, so this is, this is how it happened exactly. So I'm seeing this. Um, the angel that is on my left hand side is talking to Lord Jesus. Um, I know you want to you want to hear what I saw in Lord Jesus. I'm going to tell you uh, what he looked like. Of course, he was on a throne. He did not have a white beard. He had white hair. It wasn't long. Um, so the angel that is on my left is this is shortly before I was able to leave that third world country. So the angel is communicating to the Lord, and the Lord is just listening, right? And then. I'm looking at the Lord because he's so amazingly bright. And then I see, I see the Lord turn his head to the further to the right. So the other spiritual being um, said something after the angel on my left had said something, the, the person, the spiritual being in, the, in this suit said something. And then the Lord turned his, his head to look at him and was listening to him. So then the Lord looks at me right he looks at me and oh, we're trying to get so i was a little i was nervous and in the dream i was like i didn't know what to expect so it was kind of odd you know how dreams can be so the lord um came forward like he looked at me and then he came he like bent over like this but he like i said he was five six yards away and when he bent forward like this his faith he was right in front of me so all I saw was him go forward like this. And then all of a sudden he was right in his face was right here in front of my face. And he was looking face to face, like maybe a foot away from me or so. He was looking in this eye, staring in this eye. And so he's staring in this eye. And it seems to last oh gosh, maybe a good 20 or 30 seconds. And then, so he's looking in my eye and then his eyes go all over my face. Like he's examining my face and he's looking at my face. And then when his, when he, when he looks at my eyes again, he looks at both of my eyes and he gives a big smile. I didn't smile back. <laughs> I was, I didn't know what to expect. I don't know what, what, what I was seeing. So he, he gives me the, a smile. And then when he leans back, he's back on the throne again, you know, uh, on the platform that's above me. He's when, once he leans back, he's back on his, on his throne. So after he gets back on his throne, he says something to the angel that's on my left. And, um, and the angel says something back to him and, and shakes his head. And then the Lord, after that, the Lord looks at, looks back at me and smiles and just gave me, and I hold on to that. I hold on to that vision. And it like I said, it wasn't an open vision, but in my mind's eye, I hold on to that, that dream I had. Um, because it was, like I said, it was shortly before doors started to open up and I was able to, to leave.
And so, okay, I want to quickly, I'm getting up on 45 minutes. This is the longest, but I think it's very significant because is it very like, is it possible that there's some kind of, you know, uh, scientific reason that I would have these dreams and visions? You know, there's probably, yeah, there is probably some type of scientific explanation as to why a person has these dreams and things like that. But is it very likely when you, you know, consider the time, let me, I don't want this to shake, considering the timing of the dreams, considering the type of dreams, considering the fact that I have, I was never in scripture, I, you know, and for me to have these dreams of the Lord uh, reciting and hearing Romans 8 when I couldn't, I never knew about Romans 8. I, I was clueless about scriptures. And so all of, and then the timing of the, the the pale horse and the plague and the war the 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 the, the angel saying that America was going to go into a war, I mean, is it very likely that all of these things would happen? In addition to my two previous vid videos about empirical evidence, really, you know. So that's what I wanted to share. Um, oh, so the description of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I really can't remember what he was wearing. He was wearing a crown, a beautiful crown. Like I said, he had no white beard and he had white hair, but it was uh, short white hair. But what I remember, because remember his face was right here up to me, up to mine. What I remember is his face. Remember I said how bright he was? His, his face and his complexion, it was like pearl. It wasn't just like a regular white, like, um, like white paper as white that we would know it. His face gave the appearance of being like a, the like a really beautiful pearl you know and um and like a luminescent and his face was so bright his face was so bright that the edges of his of his face you know uh like the eyebrows and his jawline and his cheekbone um and the edges of his nose and it's like all of the edges of the Lord's face, because his face was so bright and illuminated that it looked like he had a silver lining on, on his face because it was so bright. And when he turned his face and he was looking around, his face just was Illuminous. It was just so bright, and it the whole, his whole face just shined, and it was luminous. Like I said, the 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 actual complexion and and the face and the skin of the Lord was like pearl, uh, like a, a luminescent pearl as he moved. It was just luminescent, and and it was so bright that the edges of the Lord's face shined so brightly. It it gave the appearance of being lined like a with silver like a silver lining it was it was beautiful and i i hold on to that dream so like i said the lord gave that to me those dreams and visions to encourage me and you know i i I'm, this video is getting kind of long but uh it has a a lot of people say well how come that never happens to me how come the lord doesn't talk to me in those ways and i would never um, I heard a rabbi say, well, I'm very cautious when people say things like that. I'm like I said, I'm not doing it to prof say I'm a prophet or, you know, the Lord gave me these signs and dreams because I'm special. It was horrendous what I what I was when I what I went through. And I think if it wasn't for those instances that he had given me to just get me through, you know, those those moments, I don't. But. I don't know what would have happened, and but a lot of people, the Lord knows whether or not if He gives you a sign, empirical evidence using other people, um, like um, the the, the Skyrider in my previous videos, or the the person driving the van with that message on the sticker for me. Um, if He doesn't use other people, and he, you know, He He knows if He gives you a, a vision or a dream that you whether or not it's going to help, and whether or not you're going to take it seriously, and which is to help. And I I had so many. I had so many things happen, uh, like God speaking to me through empirical evidence and things like that. And I had previous, um, you know, a couple others I said I had not mentioned to you. But and and when it came down to it, when I found out how the level of things that you know evil had gotten away with, I still to decided to you know sever. Really, 
like I said, I didn't, I, at the time I thought there is no God and if there is, he can't be good. So, um, I figured I was on my own at that, at that juncture. And, um, so he, he gave me those, those, uh, other dreams and visions to strengthen me. And, you know, he sent me a, a great YouTube, a friend shared a video of, um, an apologist. I told you that really cemented my belief, uh, in the existence of God. So I might address, um, why, you know, I don't understand the things about suffering, like, um, <sighs> Hitler for one or Stalin for another, uh, you know, they ki killed millions and millions of people, but evil does exist. This is a fallen world and evil does exist. And, you know, Stalin's last um, gesture as he was alive was to raise his fist at the Lord. And uh, he knew his reign and his time was over. And so he knew so obviously he believed in, in the existence of God. He just was so so opposed to him and, and hated him so much that his last living gesture before he died in front of in the presence of his daughter was to shake his fist and look up to God in defiance and in hate because his rule, his evil rule and reign was over. And so the message is God wins in the end. That's the message. That's the that's the that's the lesson from Stalin is that evil. Just like with the, when Jesus was arrested and betrayed, and brutally beaten and scourged and crucified, uh, and evil, as the Lord said, evil has it. It's uh, it had its hour. The good news is Jesus. And our Heavenly Father, good wins in the end. Okay, I'm almost an hour. I hope I can upload this. All right, take care. God bless all you subscribers out there. Not all, my few subscribers. God bless you. I think you're precious. Thank you so much for subscribing. Take care. Bye-bye.